So my name is Pintu Kumar. I work for Qualcomm India, Bangalore. Uh, today I am going to talk about uh, PSI framework in the Linux kernel. Uh, in the past, uh, I have done some work on uh, PSI uh, framework, uh, uh, and I was curious about uh, knowing little more granular information when uh, the PSI is enabled. So I, I am going to talk about that, and uh, I wanted to present my idea and wanted to discuss about uh, the insights uh, of the experiments results that I have obtained. Yeah, so the initially I'll uh, talk about some introduction of PSI and PSI internals and uh, basically the block diagram and the flow charts uh, that I've come up with the ideas and present some experiments results and then we'll talk about the summary and conclusion. Yeah, so uh, to uh, work on this uh, experiments, I have uh, chosen a little older kernel that is 5.15 because uh, in the past I have worked on that. Uh, and uh, there are some recent changes uh, included in PSI which I have not uh, uh, presented here. For example, there is an introduction of even IRQ uh, framework here which is not covered. The C group which is already present that is also not covered here. It's a Slightly limited, limited result, but uh, it will give uh, the good amount of information to cover the topic. Uh, and I have chosen a QMU based system here uh, with the system D and ext4 as a file system. And I have used uh, stress ng to uh, carry out some experiments and develop some test utilities to generate the results. Uh, and uh, I have chosen a little uh, lower configuration system so that I can get the results pretty quickly. Yeah, so uh, the introduction part uh, is about just giving the background about what is PSI and how it works. So basically PSI means uh, pressure stall information uh, which is related to monitoring the CPU memory and I.O. usage. Um, it's available from Linux 4.20 onwards. And uh, uh, PSI basically monitors the resource contention and provides uh, uh, real-time insights uh, about the performance of the overall system, right? So PSI just gives the overall average load of the system at a particular time interval. And uh, in this paper, uh, actually I was just curious to know about what actually happens when there is a workload in the system, right? I wanted to know what is actually happening in the system in the background. So I uh, did some experiments, come up with some results, and uh, try to present my idea, whatever I have done. So the, the aim is to actually get the more granular information about the uh, internal uh, uh, task loads or whatever is running in the background. Using the PSI framework, how I can achieve that results within the kernel space, or maybe how we can do it in a user space itself. Yeah, so, uh, so as I said, PSI works by collecting the average load information related to CPU, memory, and I.O. Uh, it gives the overall average load value, as, as you can see here, uh, related to CPU, memory, and I.O. We, we get some average load uh, like uh, 10 seconds or 60 seconds and 300 seconds time frame. Uh, there is a sum and the full uh, the field which is defined, defined here. So you can see some indicates some task in the system which is delayed at that particular interval and full indicates almost all the tasks are delayed due to the lack of resources. And you can see some uh, values there, right? So values indicate the percentage of the time the task uh, got delayed. And uh, uh, there are some, uh, uh, whatever values you are seeing here actually, there is some calculation behind it. Uh, so the, this load value is actually calculated based on the calculate load formula, which is actually load average, proc load average, if you do, you'll get some numbers, right? It is defined using the same formula. And there is a total also, which indicates uh, the, the time is actually in microsecond. So if I wanted to know what happens within a microsecond level, I can uh, look into the total number and uh, get uh, some more details. Yeah, so uh, 
how the load calculation actually happens so even i was curious to know uh, how these values are defined within the psi and uh, uh, how these numbers are actually related right so uh, what i did is uh, by default uh, the load frequency was set as 2 seconds so i changed to 1 second first i try to understand how the 2 second values are uh, derived so using this formula if you see load interval formula uh, if i put the, uh, the numbers there and uh, create uh, the basically come up the value i can see the same values are uh, defined in the psi so similarly i wanted to just on a curiosity basis i wanted to change the number uh, to one second and see what numbers are changed and how the system behaves if i change it this is just for uh, experiment purpose uh, there is no need to actually change to one second Two second is also enough. So uh, I have presented the result based on two second as well. But I had done some experiment with one second as well. It is just to get get some quick numbers if I change to one second. Yeah. So the the changes that I have done it uh, it's all uh, for my experiment purpose. Like I change from uh, I added a new. Uh, interval like 1 second and 5 second there was a default 10 second and 60 second like that so i added 1 second and 5 second average load information as well based on the calculations and i changed the load frequency from 2 second to 1 second and then i wanted to introduce some kind of a threshold uh, at that particular interval uh, when there is a threshold hit i wanted to get the more granular information uh, within that period so i defined some kind of a threshold criteria to get the details and then uh, i try to develop a simple algorithm to find out within this particular time frame basically like for example we have a total number there right so what was the previous total number and what is the current total number when it changes right so uh, suppose it changes at 100 millisecond so within that 100 millisecond what is actually happening in the system in the background so i just wanted to uh, get that information and this all i wanted to get it within the kernel space like when we hit the psi uh, at that interval what is the task that is running in the system uh, so to do all this experiment uh, maybe i introduce a new config so that all the changes goes into uh, basically the config can be enabled and disabled if someone wants to know the detailed information they can enable it otherwise if it is not required simply it can be disabled by default and even i try to develop a kind of a um, uh, daemon or a service in the user space which actually reads all this information at the user space layer and provide me a uh, good amount of information uh, about the background task that is running yeah so the, the high level block diagram is something like this so there is a resource monitor daemon that is running in the user user space which just collects the information basically it just passes the uh, executes these commands uh, proc uh, pressure cpu memory and io uh, one by one maybe and uh, uh, you can see it goes to the psi framework and based on what command is being sent related to cpu memory and io uh, we, we get this uh, average uh, load values right so now here uh, i have de uh, defined some kind of algorithm to further get more detailed information about the task uh, that is running when this number changes uh, so yeah um, uh, actually for the cpu the the full number is uh, not defined so uh, the, you will see the, in the cpu case the full number will be all zero that is at the system load level but whereas in the c group level we can still see the full cpu numbers right so uh, there is two different ways to handle it like when in case of, in case of cpu how do we get the dump and when it in case of memory and io how do we get the dump right so so uh, i come up uh, with this kind of a uh, uh, simple algorithm so basically uh, in case of when the resource is a cpu then i monitor the average load uh, basically in the sum category right i monitor the average load in the system whenever average load crosses 99% right that means my system is heavily loaded so that time uh, i i might see there is there could be a lag in the system and i wanted to quickly know what is actually happening when there is a huge cpu load how do i uh, come to know about the detailed uh, granular information in the system
and when uh, the resource is not secure that means it is a memory or a io right so in that case uh, i monitor the in the full category i monitor the total uh, the value uh, in the psi and what was the basically the total number doesn't change so uh, if there is a change that means within the time period th there is something happened right so workload is changed actually right so i monitor the previous uh, total value and the current total value if there is a change in it and with some threshold for example uh, currently i am not uh, whatever experiment i have taken right now i have not defined a threshold as such because i just wanted to first know how the the, the uh, values are uh, being presented to me right so but we can define a threshold uh, based on a lot uh, different uh, system it could behave differently so what i uh, figured out like uh, for example if i said 100 millisecond is the time period right so in the 100 millisecond how many tasks are running and what are the details of that task so uh, some kind of threshold we can define and then uh, once it crosses the threshold i just simply wanted to dump the information right so now to dumping the information because there could be a huge number of tasks maybe thousand plus tasks is running in the system i cannot keep on dumping everything we need to uh, uh, break down or we need to limit it to some value right so uh, maybe uh, what i thought is okay uh, we can come up with uh, for example uh, we just uh, take only those tasks which is on a run queue and it is not an idle task right so that is the my major workload that i wanted to check and if the pressure is related to cpu then i just simply keep on adding to a different different list and in the end i just present the top 10 tasks that is running in the system right so this is just a very simple uh, um, algorithm to uh, get the granular information and uh, uh, these are some results that I have obtained uh, uh, for each category CPU, memory, and IO. So, when it comes to CPU, uh, uh, I used the stress NG to create a CPU load in the system using the file CPU, right? And then uh, I try to mix up with uh, various parameters, uh, creating a memory pressure, IO pressure, and running some multiple daemon dot some kind of uh, load in the system, right? And then uh, I try to run that continuously in a loop. So when I run this uh, pressure CPU command, and every one second I wa I wanted to monitor what is actually happening. So here, uh, uh, as I can see, uh, uh, in the CPU category case, right, we have some average uh, one five number, and then in full we can see full all numbers are zero because in the case of uh, overall system, the full numbers are not defined. So only on the sum. Uh, we will see the changes. So uh, what I see is when there is a not heavy load in the system, the, the average one or five number doesn't change, right? It, it remains pretty constant and not even uh, having that much uh, numbers, right? And what I saw is when the average five numbers goes above 99, I can really see there is a, some delay in the system. I can literally feel the, the hang or kind of a delay in the system. And that time I wanted to understand uh, what all actually happening and contributing for that factor so yeah um, so for the dumping the the, the numbers uh, so for dumping the numbers uh, i i just try to choose like what is the pid what is the priority of the process on which cpu it is running how much memory consumption that process has taken how much cpu utilization even there is a psi flag which is added in the task struct so the PSI flag, uh, it's defined in the PSI itself, which, which, which actually tells me the task is related to what, it, whether it is a memory stall, whether it is a, um, I mean, uh, CPU stall, uh, based on what factors, right? PSI flag will give me, give me some uh, details. And then what is the actual process name, right? So uh, in, in this case, if you see like, uh, uh, average of 5 is above 99 and uh, we get all this uh, dump and here you can see almost all the CPU time is higher and we in the CPU case we have this sum number so there are some tasks which is actually uh, causing CPU con con contention right and you can see all the CPUs like 1.5 second timing that is uh, taken by each process right so this is just to give some high level and in the down I ever wanted to know how many tasks are running on this CPU, which is on the run queue and it is not idle task, 
right? So uh, I see like there are 71 number of tasks that is running based on my workload. And uh, uh, I just try to present the top 10 out of that. Yeah, so similar to this, uh, even for the memory test, um, again, I try to create a different workload in the system. And uh, uh, here I wanted to uh, even monitor uh, what actually happens in case of uh, uh, this memory contention, right? So at, at some point of time in my system, the free memory goes uh, pretty down, less than 10 megabyte. Uh, like here in this case, it is 7 megabyte. And I can see immediately after this, there is a OOM happened in the system. So before the OOM happens, uh, what actually happens uh, related to the different process? So I just wanted to know about that. So when I when I try to dump this, I can clearly see that there are uh, full numbers visible here in case of average one second and five second as well. And I can see there is a change in the total full and the previous total full, right? So here, what I observed is, the total full and the previous total full, full it is more than 100 millisecond. So in my observation, what I noticed is, is that when there is a 100 millisecond gap between the previous total full and the current total full, I can see that OOM can happen in the system. So this is this, this can vary from system to system, but this is on my workload, I have noticed this. So that's what the threshold that I was talking about, right? Based on the your system uh, behavior or maybe uh, what the system uh, you are using, based on that, we can define a threshold if you are interested to get more granular information. So here, uh, here also, if you see, uh, um, we have the high CPU utilization task, we have high memory utilization task, and you can see the PSI flag, how the PSI flag changes, right? So here, if you see in this, in case, uh, Mouse, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, uh, if you see the the the, the 20, 22 number flag, uh, which represents a memory stall running, and we have a separate full for running as well as mem stall, right? This together gives the mem stall. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so similar to this, uh, even the I.O. results are also similar to the memory part. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we have only three minutes left. Can you define what were your, was your goal to like, uh, increase the frequency of averaging, uh, add additional uh, stat statistics? What is your final goal? You are saying, I'm interested to see what's happening. But what, what goal are you trying to achieve? What, what are you trying to achieve? Yeah, yeah. So basically, uh, when I have these uh, kind of results, so I can uh, develop some kind of a uh, the, the daemon in the user space and get this all this dump and figure out which is the highest utilization of the task basically, which task is having a higher utilization related to CPU or memory or the IO. And what was not even enough with the current uh, you know, frequency or statistics that we have today? Yeah, so currently uh, the PSA just give the average load value, right? It doesn't tell me what actually happens in the background, what tasks are running and those details we have to separately monitor using the top command or maybe some other interface. I guess I had a similar question to the second one. What is your real world use case where average 10 was not enough and where two, millis two seconds was not enough? Like why did you have to go down? Five and uh, yeah, one, one and five. five yeah, like... one and five is just for my experiment to get the uh, quick results, right? So the, the 10 second is a little higher. So I have to run maybe more and more workload to hit the numbers. But w what is the real world use case where that's not enough? Like stress will show it, but if there's a real world use case where average 10 is not enough. Yeah, so there is another uh, uh, interface which is added in the PSI, which is... Uh, uh, kind of a poll, right? You can poll for that particular uh, duration. You can define a window size and the, the, the time limit, and through that you can get the dump, right? So that is another way. But this is like to get the quick results uh, on this particular interface I added. It is nothing to do like you can add one or five. You can get it with 10, but you have to wait for a little longer, mm -hmm. right? So that's the only purpose. 
the just one final result i wanted to uh, uh, say about that whatever result i got right as i said previously uh, the, the oom has happened right so when the oom has happened we can see that what is the pid which is taking higher uh, amount of uh, memory right that process is actually killed so before the oom happens i could come to know what was the process uh, which is consuming that much memory and uh, what is actually happening so before that itself i could able to figure out So I would be extremely cautious of correlating pressure and resource utilization. For example, if you if you do this on a web server, you're always going to get the web server is the thing. By your metric, you're going to get the web server is the thing causing the problem because it's the big thing. That's how the um killer basically works, right? The um killer basically works like that thing is really big. I'm going to kill that thing. It's not very intelligent outside of like um score adjust. And I think everyone in this room knows like when we called something score or adjust, it means we had no fucking clue what the heuristic should be. Um, like that, that's, I would be extremely cautious because when you do this correlation of like the um killer killed this thing, A, it doesn't always kill the right thing. And B, uh, usually if it's a very small thing, you're not going to detect it by this method. Like if something pushes the system over the edge, you're not going to detect it by saying like, what, what did the um killer do? Because that's kind of why PSI was created in the first place, right? To try and have better understanding of like, where should we be directing our attention to, to get better control of the system again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.